What's up, fam? Welcome to the Godly Wisdom Podcast. I am your host, Clifford Tate, and I just want to say thank you so much for showing love to this podcast. Thank you for tuning in for the first time, if today is your first time. But y'all, as you can see by today's topic, life after salvation, things I wish they told me before giving my life to Christ. Um, This is episode 11. Um, it's really crazy to know that we're coming to the end of the season one, the first ever season of Golly Wisdom Podcast. This is not the last, this is not the last episode for the season. Just letting y'all know, I think we have about two more episodes left in the season. I'll let you guys know, um, when ep- season two will start again and all that, but it, it, we're not here to talk about that today. Today, we're talking about things I wish they told me before giving my life to Christ because, being saved, <sighs> I'm so excited for this topic because y'all, and I know it seems like I'm jumping all over the place, but I need to let you guys know this because it's literally about to change your life. I'm not doing this video from a better place. I'm not doing this for, from a place where I'm upset at Christianity, no, but I really am doing this so that I can give you some information that you can be able to apply to your life that you don't have to necessarily um, struggle with something, fall in life before you learn the lesson, right? So I just want to make sure that you understand where I'm coming from. Um, Now, I think that one of the greatest things, if not the greatest thing that ever happened to me is being saved by God. The gift of salvation is so important to the human um, life, to the child of God, that um, it doesn't get any better than that. Salvation um, is one of the greatest things that I'm grateful for because through my salvation, I've literally watched my life and I'm still watching my life unfold and increase and elevate and grow each and every day. And so um, I just wanted to let you know a disclaimer. I'm not here to bash Christianity. I love it. It's one of the greatest things that happened to me. And I love the journey so much that I want to share things with you that I wish I learned. Um, The reason why I decided to do this video is because one, the lack of discipleships in the body of Christ. I believe that right now we have a lot of churches or a lot of organizations, um, a lot of ministries that want people to be saved, but there's no work being done on how we're going to disciple them after they're saved. So that leaves room for the enemy to play with people play with their mind, play with their lifestyle after they're saved to be able to even go back into sin or even do worse than they were doing before they came to Christ. And so one of the reasons why I'm grateful for my church, All Nations Church, New Jersey, shout outs to Pastor Joe and Eunice Asma for the great work they do at my church is the fact that there's emphasis on discipleship, even after you have been saved, you have to go through a discipleship in the house of God to be able to make sure that you understand the foundations of the faith and there are things that a believer must know and not walk into it blindly. And so for that, I just want to say um, shout outs to you, mommy, shout outs to you, pastor, um, for that great work. But I decided to do this video, um, things I wish they told me before giving my life to Christ because um, I learned a lot from being at my church I learned a lot after I was saved. I learned a lot of things that I realized that um, the average believer don't learn. I talk to people now. I have friends from all over the place. And um, sometimes the things that I learned so easily from my church, from my pastors, from my leaders, from my mentors, I realize um, other churches are not teaching it. Some of my friends don't even know. Some of them had to go through some life challenging pains and 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 troubles to find out or to figure out those things so there's a lack of discipleships in the body of christ and number two um the reason why i want to talk about some of the things that i wish i learned before giving my life to christ is is because you see um i believe that there are some things that you have to learn in life by experiencing it by going through and especially this walk of faith um there are some things that you would not know um because it's a walk of faith as you walk you begin to learn some things begin to unfold which which there's nothing wrong with that 
But at the same time, I don't think that is always the best way of learning. Um, I, I believe that experience is one of the greatest teachers that can help teach you to be able to live the life that God has called you to be. But I don't believe that experience is the best teacher for your life as a child of God, because you don't have to experience everything in order to know if you should do it or not. You don't have to experience putting your hands in a fire for you to know that, hey, if you put your hands in a fire, it's going to burn. I, I believe that sometimes instruction is the greatest teacher. So sometimes we need things like this, videos like this, podcasts like this. I need to instruct you. I need to give you information in order for you to be able to avoid all those things that some people go through or some of the things that I went through. And so I'm making this video because I don't want you to have to go through some horrible experiences in order to learn the things that you need to learn as a child of God. And lastly, one of the reasons why I decided to make this video is because there are people right now in the body of Christ that are leaving the faith simply because the reality of Christianity that was presented to them by the people does not match the things that they are going through. Um, when they realize um, what the church presented to them versus the reality that they're experiencing now, it seems to be a complete lie. I literally know people who have left the faith and are now full-blown atheists simply because what they told them in the beginning did not match what they started to go through. And so I, I, I wanted to correct that. And on behalf of the body of Christ, if there's anybody out there like this listening to me, I want to apologize on, on our behalf. And just to let you know that one person messing up or one group of people messing up um, um, the message of salvation for you does not mean that God and his message is corrupted. The people who carry the message may be imperfect, but the message is perfect. The message is blameless. And so look at the message and the God of the message and, and not necessarily sometimes the messengers because we all need help. We're all struggling with something. And so those are the three reasons why I wanted to make this video. Now, as the custom of this podcast is, I want to start off by reading the Proverbs of the day. And the Proverbs of the day today is found in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verses 15. And I'm reading that in the Passion Translation. It says the spiritually hungry are always ready to learn more for their hearts are eager to discover new truths. The spiritually hungry are always ready to learn more for their hearts are eager to discover new truths. I pray that you will be spiritually hungry today. I pray that you will be ready and eager to learn. I pray that you will not find yourself in a place where you're just like, I know it all. I pray that throughout this episode, you will open up and say, wow, that is true. Because I found that most Christians, you know, by God's grace, I've been doing YouTube for a long time and I've been teaching by God's grace for a minute. And since I started doing this on social media platform, there are Christians who are questioning everything and, and, and comment on everything instead of actually sitting there and opening up and allowing the word of God to transform them. Some people, unfortunately, will comment about, you know, my accent, will comment about my grammar instead of listening to the message that is in it. And for me, you know, I love those things because it is a sign that, you know, one, I, have, I still have work to do. I have room for improvement, for growth, but it shows the work that is needed for our generation that we have been, we have been so um, much into judging, into correcting others that we don't take the time to learn and to grow from the things that are being taught. And so one, what are some things I wish they told me before giving my life to Christ? Now, I can give y'all a list forever, but we're going to start it off like this. I wish that when I got saved, they told me that this walk of faith is a process. I wish that they told me that you can fall again, but you can get back up. I feel like when you get saved, there's this whole highness. There's this whole energy, this whole excitement. Oh, my God, like you're saved now. You're good. God has delivered you from all that you used to deal with. 
whereby that is true spiritually. You have been saved spiritually. But like a couple of episodes ago, I taught that salvation isn't threefold. That we're saved, we're being saved, and we shall be saved. So when you give your life to Christ, I wish that they told me that you right now your spirit is saved. But your soul has to go through a process of, of being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so for the one listening to me, I want you to know this, that your walk is a process. And so even though you are saved, it is possible to be saved and still be struggling. Oh, boy. Can we really talk about that? That you can be saved and still have things that you're dealing with. Why? Because your soul have to now go through a transformation. Your soul consists of your mind, your spirit. Um, sorry, your, your mind, your, your, your emotions, and your will has to go through a renewing of mind. It has to go through a transformation. And transformation is not a one-time decision. Transformation is a process. I wish they told me that because we have people in the faith right now that when they mess up, they feel like they're not saved simply because they fell. You can be saved and still fall. It is not an excuse to fall. But if you know this, it makes the journey better. Instead of you judging yourself, blaming yourself, feeling bad and walking in shame and guilt, you understand that, listen, man, even though you want to come to that point where you stop, that addiction, stop that sin, stop that, whatever the case may be, even though you want to stop it completely, you are in a process. So don't cancel yourself out of it. And so one thing God told me when I wanted to be free from pornography, he told me, he said, if you want to be free from this, Clifford, look at your pornography addiction, your freedom, your deliverance, look at it as a daily thing and not as a whole. It's not about, oh my God, I'm done forever. It's about being able to be free from pornography today, focusing on today. And Christianity is a today walk. It is, it is, it is a today. God don't like when you're always worried about the future, the next day. No, focus on today. So I wish that they told me that this walk is a process. Number two, I wish that they told me before giving my life to Christ, that your life can feel worse, but it doesn't mean you're destroyed. Yeah. I literally wish they told me that your feelings is your number one false prophet. One of the greatest things I've learned in my church from my pastor is that. Is that as a child of God, don't listen to your feelings. Your feelings be lying, man. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people get saved, and when they begin to feel a certain way, they feel like they're not saved. Your feelings is your number one false prophet. Don't listen to it. And just because you feel worse doesn't mean you're destroyed. Just because you're hard hit on every side doesn't mean you're destroyed. I wish they told me that when you get saved, you're going to be hit. I wish that they told me that when you get saved, there are days where you're, you're going to be unstable. Some days you're going to be very happy. Some days it's going to be down. But eventually, as you keep on reading the word, as you keep on growing, as you keep on walking with God, all of it gets better. And my encouragement to you, for the one who feels worse right now, I want you to know that it will not always be like this. That just because you feel worse does not mean that you're destroyed. It is just a feeling, and feelings fade. Point number three. This probably has to be my favorite one out of all the points. That I wish before I gave my life to Christ, like, or the day I gave my life to Christ, they'll, they'll, uh, my, my church does this. By the way, I want to give a disclaimer. All these things that I'm telling you all is because I've learned it from my church. We do this. And so um, if you need a church to visit, come All Nations Church, New Jersey, Elizabeth, New Jersey, church plug, boom. But if you are not in around, you can watch it online or find a great Bible teaching church wherever you are. I encourage you to do that. But whatever you do, don't stay home. Don't just be one of those people who don't like to go to church. Um, the next point, like I said, is probably my favorite one. Is that I wish when I got saved, they told me that the church is a hospital and the church is full of broken people. I wish that they told me that Christians actually lie. 
I wish that they told me that the so-called holy saints can hurt you. I wish that they told me that the so-called holy saints can fight you. I wish that they told me that the church is full of people who will gossip about you. Because we are not in the hospital for patients. We're all in a hospital for the doctor. And so don't let these things about people throw you off. And I'm sharing this with you, not to bash the church, but to let you know that the church is full of sick people. We're all sick. Even the pastor is sick. And the only reason why the pastor is a pastor is, is because he has been in that hospital for so long and that he knows which, which, which ward, which beds, which rooms to recommend for you. He has been in this for so long that he's good at this. And so listen to me, man. The church is full of sick people. Stop getting disappointed thinking the church is God. We're all trying to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. The body of Christ is not perfect. So when you get saved, if you got saved ex expecting for everything to be sweet, I'm so sorry to disappoint you. Because I need you to read the contract now before you sign it. And in the contract, it states that when you give your life to Christ, you will come across broken people. You will come across hurt people. Some people may hurt you. Some people may disappoint you. Some people may lie on you. Some people may gossip about you. But never use what they do to determine how you treat them. Never allow people's brokenness to cause you to look less like Christ. The church is full of broken people. And even though it is not acceptable for people to live anyhow, Always know this, that God is counting on you to transform somebody through the way you love them. I wish they told me that. Because there are so many people who are leaving the faith. There are, there are people who are church hurt and don't even want to return to, 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 the, to, to the church right now simply because they, they had no clue. They thought that these were going to be the same people that was here to just help my life and transform me. But listen, man, we all need help. I wish that they told me point number four, that this walk is a walk of transformation and not necessarily about what I can gain. A lot of people make the decision to follow Christ because they believe that they're going to receive things. It's not about receiving things first. It's about being a thing first. It's about being transformed first. God don't want to save you just for you to have things. He want to save you so that you can be transformed, so that you can become somebody and you can be a blessing to somebody. I wish that they told me that. Point number five. I wish that they told me that this walk will require me to be alone a lot. But I'm never lonely. <sighs> Following Christ have to be one of, sometimes, have to be one of the most, I don't even know how to put it. it you, you can find yourself in a place where you're alone a lot just because you chose Christ. And I wish that they told me that just because you're alone does not mean you're lonely. A lot of people think that because they chose to follow Christ and now they're alone, sometimes God will have you to be alone so that he can work on you. Sometimes God will separate you so that you can be consecrated unto him, so that he can set you apart for his use. And for those of us who God has called to be able to use us for his assignment, I wish that they told us that this walk is a walk where you have to walk alone sometimes. Because what you carry is so great that God cannot afford you to walk with useless people who will destroy the very thing that God has placed in you. But again, just because you're alone doesn't mean you're lonely. Because eventually, when you stick through that process, God sends the right people your way. And so if you didn't know this, I'm telling you now that following Christ will cause you to walk alone. 
but you would never be lonely because God is always with you. Point number six. I wish that they told me that Christian friendships are a lot of works, so choose wisely. Before I gave my life to Christ, I wish that they told me that Christian friendships are a lot of work, so choose wisely. Because it all goes back to the people thing. That Christian friendships, I think that we have painted this picture that they are perfect friendships. Christian friendships are not perfect friendships. Christian friendships are simply broken people coming together, hoping to be like Christ and hoping to be whole. But I got into this Christian friendships over time, always thinking that it's going to be perfect and these people are going to be God. Your Christian friends are not God. They need God just like you do. So cut them some slack. I wish they told me that. But it's never too late for you to apply now. And the last thing I wish they told me is that I wish they told me that the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness. I wish that they told me that the fruit of the spirit, one, is not fruits, it's plural. So it's fruit that you can't have one without the other. You can't say, I have peace, but I don't have joy. I wish they told me that. Because a lot of people out here walking around talking about something. Oh, yeah, I got the fruit of the spirit because I got peace. But, you know, when it comes to patience, I don't got that. No, you don't. You don't got nothing. Because you can't have one without the other. It is one thing, the fruit of the spirit. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. All of that is one fruit. And I wish that they told me that the fruit of the spirit is a result of the seed you sow. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit. I literally wish that they told me that, hey, the fruit of the spirit is not just going to come into your life, but rather the fruit of the spirit is a result of the seed you sow in your walk with the Holy Spirit, meaning seek the Holy Spirit every day. That don't get discouraged if you don't feel like you're you're full of love. You don't get discouraged if you don't feel like you're as patient as you, you want to be. Don't get discouraged if you, you're still struggling with faithfulness because all of that is You are sowing a seed and seeds grow over time to become a fruit. You don't just get to a part where you you have a fruit and start as a seed first. I wish they told me that. Oh, my God. And so for the one listening to me, don't beat yourself down. You may still be struggling with being patient. You may still be struggling with being more loving. You may still be struggling with being um, at peace and having peace and joy and all that. But it doesn't mean that you're destroyed or you're not growing or you're not good. It simply means you're in a process. And if you're in a process, I have news for you. You're in a good company, the company of, of, of Paul, the apostle Paul, of Peter, of Jesus. They all had to go through the process. So allow yourself to go through the process. And I asked some of y'all on Instagram, on my story, if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do that on my personal Instagram and the Godly Wisdom Podcast. But I asked you on your story, on the story, what are some things you wish you knew before you gave your life to Christ? And I think I wanted to share this with you. Some of, some of y'all was like, um, you wish that they told you that you're really in this for life. Like this is your entire life. That salvation is not an event, but a lifestyle to follow. And I think that is so beautiful because most people actually think that they can be saved and call off. Once you give your life to Christ, you can't call off, bro. There's no such thing as, oh, yeah, I'm calling off for three days. No, you're saved. You're not going to call off for that situation. You're not going to pick and choose when you're going to be a Christian. You're a Christian for the rest of your life. And it's not just an event where you gave your life to Christ. It's not just about Sunday where you come to church. Salvation is a lifestyle to follow. Somebody else said, I love it. But it's real ghetto. I wish they told me that you're going to be going through it. I mean, we talked about it, right? That once you give your life to Christ, you're going to be going through it. Sometimes it even feels like your life is worse. <laughs> you know, it feels like when you didn't give your life to Christ, when you was out there in the world, you, you, you was enjoying life better than now that you're in Christ. But listen, that's a lie from hell. Because what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his soul? Eternity is important. 
Somebody also said, I wish they told me that transformation doesn't happen overnight. It takes time and nurturing. We've talked about this. I mean, she, this is rightfully right, rightfully so. Transformation does not happen overnight. I wish that they told me that Christianity is not a microwave religion, that Christianity is a walk with God. It is a process. Transformation does not happen overnight. You have to go through the process and some nurturing. And lastly, I asked one of my friends, I said, what do you wish they told you before giving your life to Christ? And she said, I wish they told me that you actually have to try. And that statement alone did it for me. Because the idea that God will do everything for you because you're saved and because the Holy Spirit is your helper is a lie from hell. You have to put in the work as a child of God. The Bible said that work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So yes, you have been saved and it's, it's not based on works. But to be set apart for God to use you for certain things, you have to also make sure that you're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because there's something called progressive sanctification. And y'all, these are all the points that I have. I pray that this helped you. This is very different. But I pray that this helped you to kind of regroup because I don't want you to give up on the faith. I don't want you to be disgusted by the imperfections of the Christians in the faith. Know that again, it's a process. We're all sick. We're all in a hospital. We all need help. And most importantly, you can do this. So I pray that this encourage you a little bit this help you to regroup and to keep going that is it y'all um show love to this podcast by doing all the stuff you're supposed to do uh, just share the podcast rate the podcast apple podcast um spotify google podcast all that stuff just do all that stuff share with your friends and family and um follow us on instagram on tiktok and share the share the content share the content let me know um some things that you wish you know, they told you before you gave your life to Christ. Let me know them on the Instagram. Let me know them in the comment section if you're on YouTube and the show notes. Wherever you are, make sure you comment. Let's engage. But um, hey, keep on going because you could do this. Remember, as we're bridging the gap, this is still our season of order. And lastly, don't forget to be blessed, be yourself, and be happy. Peace. <laughs>